Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. It is Thursday. All of our guests today brought to you by Optic Foliar, the only lights on spray with no damage and no burning to your plant leaves. Plant efficiency, nutrition, and results all combined into a single solution for all stages of growth and safe to use on flowers. Spray it, see it, believe it. There's Rick spraying it right now. Yeah. That's Optic <clears throat> Foliar. Visit this made in BC company online at opticfoliar.ca as we're joined now. Uh, by TSN Scouting Director Craig uh, Button in the wake of the Canucks 4-1 loss in Pittsburgh. How are you, sir? I am uh, really good, uh, Donnie and Rick. But uh, in the wake, in, in the wake of, uh, of a few weeks mm -hmm. of uh, real poor performance with the Vancouver Canucks, and I, I'm not going to tell you guys anything you don't know. Patience is not only running thin; it may have er evaporated. Yeah. What goes through your mind when you watch this team play hockey? Uh, disjointed, disjointed in, in, in a lot of different areas. You know, I think, I don't think, we've talked about this previously. Yeah. I, 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 I'm watching what Travis is doing and I can appreciate what he's doing. He, you know, he's trying to protect a really poorly constructed blue line. And I, I, I understand from a coaching perspective why you want to try to do that. And, you know, you're trying to protect Demko to a certain extent. But it's not working, and they've taken away from their greatest strength, which is Demko and their offense. Play at 7-4. You're not going to win trying to protect the blue line. The blue line is not good enough to, to, to try to protect them. They're giving up as many chances as they ever did. Demko's protecting it. So throw caution to the wind and play offensively with your offensive weapons because it's not just the frustration from an overall team point of view, but I think the offensive players now are going, wait a second we're trying to do this and it's not working and, and who gets the flack now, the offensive players for not producing. And I, I think a lot of that was borne out in uh, JT Miller's uh, comment, non-comment last night when asking about the buy-in and, you know, the players know what works. The players know what isn't working. The players are committed to trying to do things, but it's not working. And I think Travis has to make an adjustment in that regard. Craig, can you explain what you mean by play at seven, four? What I mean by 7-4, win the game 7-4. Okay. You're not okay. going to win That's the game thought. Okay. trying to win 3-2. You're not going to win it trying to play close, Open it up. close to the vest. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, play your strengths. He, he, he's trying to protect a significant weakness that is never going to be corrected, in my view, until the blue line construction, the blue line personnel is improved. It's not. Last summer at the uh, trade, at the free agency, I said they're cornering the market on bottom pair defensemen. Bottom pair defensemen round out a group. They don't build a group. And that's on Jim Benning and the general manager. They have to be able to get that personnel on the blue line much better. Like I said, I understand what Travis is doing, trying, but he's taking away from their strength as their offensive weapons, those skilled players. I mean, even putting JT Miller back in the middle, it's trying to open up some offensive opportunities. You're never, gonna, you're never going to be able to be successful with that blue line. So why are you taking away from your strength? To me, go for it. Like, you know, you got to go. And, and not only that, you have a goaltender that's signed long term. So mm -hmm. it's not like he's in a contract year where, you know, numbers can come into play. Hey, Thatcher, here's what we're going to do. Here's how it's going to look. Do we get a better blue liners? This is how we got to play. You know what? Do your part. Thatcher's up for it. And now you let the offensive players loose. That's how I see it. Like I said, I understand what Travis is doing. It's not working. You can't keep trying to do the same thing. Jim Benning will tell you that they improved their blue line in the offseason when they acquired Oliver ekman Larson. And, Craig, most people in Vancouver will say he's been just fine. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I think that the expectation was is that he could be just fine and that, that, that he could take some of the pressure off of Quinn Hughes. Well, here's the problem. There's nobody else to take the pressure off of Quinn Hughes. There's nobody else to take, you know, a load and a little bit of a burden off of Oliver ekman Larson. Forget about the contract. This is what you got now. So, you know, again, when you look at the blue line, you look like I'm not kidding when I said they cornered the market on bottom pair defensemen. They, they have a massive gap 
in their top two pairs. And until you get better, it's not about putting players into that spot and going, you need players that can play in those roles. Mm. They got, to me, Quinn Hughes is magnificent. They got a number one. They got Oliver Ackman Larson, who at this stage of his career is, is a three slash four. Well, that means you don't have a two three or 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 a, or, or, a, or a two four, whatever you want to call it. That's massive holes on your blue line, massive, and it's personnel. It's nothing more than personnel. Yeah, Jim Benning improved the bottom pair defense group, and, and by signing those players, that's what he did. He hasn't improved the overall defense group. Uh, Craig, uh, you you know this. It's a Canadian market. There's just a, a ton of heat, ton of rumors every single day. Uh, Vancouver's rumor central for the NHL right now, and you know that, Craig. It's just a hot Canadian, volatile market. Uh, you mentioned patience. We all talk about patience. It's been eight years. How much longer can they have patience? Yeah, well, I, I, I think we're probably, you know, Rick, there's probably two parts to that. There's the patience with the performance of the team now and then looking at it from the perspective of eight years. And, you know, I, I, again, like, like any company and certainly with a hockey team in Canada, which is significant, you know, the, the, the con- can the current group, you know, affect positive change so that, uh, so that the Canucks can be successful? That, that's a question for the ownership. That's a question for it. But in the absence of, not in the absence. I think it's critically important for the ownership to be able to say, these are our people and, and, and this is what we're going with. I think the signing of Travis Green in the summer was a step in that direction. They signed Jim Benning to an extension. But, you know, if, if you're the ownership, you, you, there's going to be a lot of questions asked and there needs to be meaningful answers, not just be patient. How are we going to fix this? What are we going to do? How are we going to acquire better defense? What's our, what's our process for doing that? And from an ownership point of view, I mean, the, 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 make no mistake about it. The, the ownership knows exactly what is being said. They're watching, they're listening, they're hearing. They know. So now it comes down to me that they have to put a stake in the ground. They either have to come out and say, this is our, this is our group. This is who we believe in. We believe that, that, that we have the answers to do it. I would even say, hey, listen, give us a general outline. I don't think there's anything, uh, yes. you know, negative about saying what your plan is. People can disagree with it or conversely just saying, hey, we're going to go in another direction. But somebody's got to put a stake in the ground. Somebody's, And it's not about a stake in the ground that's met with joy or met with disappointment. There's no stake in the ground. Put a stake in the ground. Yeah, and I feel not. the same way about Montreal as I do about Vancouver. Yeah. Yeah, let's go to another Canadian city, the one that you're uh, uh, you're in. Uh, stake in the ground, by the way, uh, outstanding phrase. Um, Calgary, what do you, what do you like about what the Flames are up to this season? Well, you, you know, I've watched Daryl Sutter, you know, perform for a long time. You know, I know Daryl, and, and and again, I I think that one of the you know when I talk about Travis, Travis has shown. Uh, to me, a real, a real good ability to be a good NHL coach. And you're always trying to look at things and, okay, how do, how do we do this against this team? How do we protect this? I've talked about that. Daryl is crystal clear in knowing what his team is and what it's comprised of. And he, he, here's the players I have. Okay, so here's how we're going to have to play. Daryl isn't just married to playing one way. The details of a game in any sport are always going to be mandatory. You have to have your details in place. But what, one of the things that, I, that I've learned from Daryl and watching Daryl up close is that what Daryl does is he makes it crystal clear, here's what you can do to be successful individually and to help our team. And then he puts those clear goals, mandates, expectations into place. And he says very clearly, you know what, I'm not going to ask you to do more, but don't give me less. So those expectations are clearly laid out with respect to how, how you need to play and how you're going to play. And then he works as a coach to put the players in those situations to be at their best. And so, you, you know, they've had talent there. They, they, they have good defensemen. They have Markstrom. You, you, you both know how good Markstrom is. Yeah. You know, Chris Tanna, you know how good Chris Tanna mm-hmm. is. Those additions were significant. Coleman and Pitlick, you know, are they marquee names? Well, Mark Markstrom is a marquee goalie. Yeah. But the other guys are, are, are really good, solid players that have enhanced everything around them, along with Kachuk and Goudreau and Lindholm and Monaghan, who's coming off a of surgery. You know, they got a good team there that 
a good coach takes the individual talents and gets them to play to their abilities, the best of their abilities, and then he maximizes the potential of their team. I, 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 I know some people kind of raise an eyebrow when I say this. Daryl Sutter is following three average coaches. Three mm-hmm. average, they, like Just because you're in the NHL doesn't mean you're a good coach. They, they, they had average coaching in the three previous iterations of their head coach. Daryl's had to undo some of that average coaching, and he's raised it significantly. They don't give up very much. They understand how they're going to play, and they haven't hurt themselves offensively. Isn't that amazing mm-hmm. how you can mesh the two together when you understand, number one, you know, the additions they've made. Those additions go back to Markstrom and Tanev, Coleman, Pitlick, you know, getting players. Look at Oliver Shillington. Everybody in the league could have had Oliver Shillington. Nobody had a belief that he could do it. Daryl goes in, he goes, here's your game. Now go and play it. Oliver Shillington's having a fantastic year. Yes, he's playing with Chris Tanev, who can help any yeah. player in my view. But, you know, this is a team that recognized where, they're, where, where they had to strengthen and bolster their lineup. And, you know, a lot of people said, oh, the Calgary Flames, you know, they didn't do very much in the offseason. They changed coaches yep. last year. They added Markstrom and Tanif the year before. They had Pitlick and Coleman in this offseason. Zadorov and Erica Branson, they, they've done things to add to their team around the talent, around the group. One of the things that, you know, I think Jim Benning has to do, because there's a talented group of players in Vancouver. Make no mistake about it. And I think that, you know, the supporting cast – on the blue line mm-hmm. has been below average. Your home looks nice. I think it's nicer than uh, Connor McDavid's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, listen, this is the apartment that I that I use oh. when I'm in Toronto. I'm in Toronto oh, for, okay. for oh. a few days. So so this is uh, like it's right in the uh, annex area by the University of Toronto. But you know what? Uh, Connor McDavid's uh, house being featured in uh, Architectural Digest. I, I will never be featured in Architectural Digest yeah, or yeah. or in Gentleman's Quarterly, just yeah. so you know. <laughs> Maybe Hockey Digest. Remember that magazine from, oh, yeah. from way back in the yeah, day? Hockey Craig, Digest. thanks Rick for this. Rick doesn't remember that. He's too young. He's too young. He's heard about it, Don. Craig. From people, from you and me. <laughs> Craig, Donnie and I get called a dinosaur all the time. I'm right up there with you guys. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, you, you shouldn't declare that because we're we're we're, we're, we're presenting a different narrative, Rick. We're, yeah, pres- yeah. we're offering a different narrative for you to fall for. Yes, yes. Yeah. Rick get, gets called a lot of things. Trust me, Craig. Yeah. We got we got to roll, my friend. Thanks so much. Take care of that apartment, Craig. You're the yeah, best. Thanks. You you're the best, Craig. Day. You're the best.